In this video I'm going to introduce binary adders. They're relatively straightforward digital circuits that form the basis of the arithmetic logic unit or ALU, which is one of the important building blocks of modern CPUs. In fact what we're talking about here is combinational logic, where we combine logic gates at a single point in time to create some sort of function, such as in this case a mathematical addition. In different videos I talk about sequential logic using things like flip-flops where time is important and the order in which the operations take place is very important. We've seen previously how we can combine gates together to create logic functions and in this case we're going to apply our skills to a binary addition. First we have to look at addition. So we know that in decimal addition when we add numbers like 3 plus 3 we get 6. The subscript here of 10 refers to base 10 or decimal. If we add 4 plus 4 we get 8 and most importantly 5 plus 5 equals 0 with a carry out of 1 which we read as 10. Binary addition is the same. We previously used plus to denote the OR operation. In this case I'm referring to addition with the plus sign and we're using addition with base 2 numbers. So in this case 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 0 equals 1, 0 plus 0 equals 0 and finally 1 plus 1 equals 0 with a carry out of 1. This is the basis of the half adder so we'll turn this into a truth table. So here is the truth table for the half adder. You can see on the left hand side that we have 0 plus 0 equals to 0. So we say that 0 on the left hand side of the plus sign is the A, 0 on the right hand side is B. So we write those values directly into the truth table. So we put a 0 under A and a 0 under B for row 1. We use sigma to denote the sum, which is 0, and we use C out to represent the carry out, which is also 0. So we continue on, we go down to the next row. 0 plus 1 gives us a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. 1 plus 0 equals 1, which is a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. And finally, the last row, 1 plus 1, equals 0 with a carry of 1. So we write a 0 in the sum column and we write a 1 in the carry out column. So the next thing we have to do is work out how we can realize this using logic gates. If we look at the C out column of the half adder we can see that when A is equal to 0, B is equal to 0, we get an output of 0 for the C out. If we go down to the table we see 0 1 gives us an output of 0 1, 0 gives us an output of 0, and 1, 1 gives us an output of 1. So we only have an output of 1 for C out when A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1. And this is exactly the same as an AND gate. So if we look at the truth table for an AND gate, we can see that they match exactly, which means that we can model the C out component of the half adder using a single two input AND gate. If we now examine the sum column or the sigma column of the half adder, we can see that when we have 0, 0, we get an output of 0, 0, 1, we get an output of 1, 1, 0, we get an output of 1, and 1, 1, we get an output of 0. And we can say, and we can extrapolate from this, that when the inputs are different, we get an output of 1. When the inputs are the same, we get an output of 0. And this is exactly the same as the exclusive OR gate truth table which means that we're able to model the sum component of the half adder using a single two input exclusive OR gate. We can now draw this using the diagram on the right hand side. We see we have two inputs going into our circuit with the two inputs going to the exclusive OR gate and also branching off and going to the AND gate. The output of the single two input AND gate is our carry out and the output of our exclusive OR gate is the sum of our two input half adder. The next thing we need to do is build a circuit to test that our solution works. In this circuit I've implemented a simple half adder. On this side here I've got two inputs and here I've got my exclusive OR gates and my AND gates. So the idea is that this is my output sum and this is my carry. So based on the diagram of the half adder, the exclusive OR gate, two of the inputs are connected to the exclusive OR out gate and the output then goes to the yellow LED. 
the two inputs are also connected to the AND gate and the output of this, the green wire, goes to the carry. So we can see here that if we have an input of 1, we have a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. Similarly, if the other input, if we have an input of 1, we have a sum of 1 and a carry of 0. If I push the two buttons at the same time, you'll see that we have a sum of 0 and a carry of 1. So that's the implementation on the breadboard of a simple half adder. Up to this point I've been talking about half adders. So what is a half adder exactly? Well to answer that we have to actually determine what is a full adder. First I'm going to go to a decimal example of addition as before. You remember that when we added the numbers 5 plus 5 we got the sum of 0 and a carry of 1. So in this case we had two inputs and we had two outputs. The two inputs are A, B and then we've got our sum and our carry. If we go to the right hand question we'll see we're now adding 25 plus 45 in decimal. And the way we do this is we start with the ones. So we have the question what is 5 plus 5? Well 5 plus 5 is equal to 0 with a carry of 1. Now the usual notation that I use is to place the 1 on the line. And now we've got a different question. We've got a question what is 2 plus 4 plus 1? So to get that answer of 7 we have three inputs and two possible outputs. Our three inputs are our A which is 2, our B which is 4, our carry in which is 1 and then we have our sum and our carry out. So we've gone from a situation where we have two inputs and two outputs with a half adder to a situation where we have three inputs and two outputs for a full adder. And the same holds for our binary calculations. In the binary case we're going to add 1 1 base 2 to 1 1 base 2. Essentially we're adding 3 plus 3 if we're talking about decimal. In this case we go to the rightmost column just like we did when we were adding our decimal numbers. In this case we want to add 1 plus 1 and because there's no possible carry in at this time we can use a half adder so we can pass 1 for A, 1 for B we get a sum of 0 and a carry of 1. This carry then goes onto the line on the left hand side of the dashed line. And this means now that we have three inputs to the next stage, so we're adding the twos together. So 1 plus 1 plus 1. So A, B and carry in are the inputs to our full adder, and our sum and our carry out are the outputs of our full adder. In this case we get a sum of 1 and a carry out of 1. Our solution then to this problem is 1, 1, 0, which is 0, 1s, 1, 2 and 1, 4. So we get an answer of 6, which is what we expect. Now we have to implement this circuit or design a circuit that can deal with three inputs and give us two outputs. So here's our truth table. And because we have three inputs, A, B and carry in, we have 2 to the power of 3 possible combinations. So 2 to the power of 3 means we have 8 combinations or states. We also have our outputs, C out, and our sum. And the next thing we have to do is to design some sort of circuit to implement this truth table. Now we could use Karna maps or we could go back and use our logic minimization to create a minimum and or gate combination. But I think in this case we're going to, we're going to cheat a little bit. The way we're going to cheat is because we know there are certain properties of addition. The first property of addition that's very useful for us is the associative property. Remember when we had our decimal example and we had 3 plus 4 plus 1. Well it doesn't matter what order you do that addition. If you do 3 plus 4 we get 7 plus 1 we get 8. If you do 4 plus 1 we get 5 plus 3 we get 8. So the order of the operations doesn't matter. And the same holds true when we're dealing with binary numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is cascade two half adders. We're going to connect the sum output of the first half adder to the A input of the second half adder. Now we haven't solved the carries yet. We have two independent carries which is not appropriate. Well if you look at the truth table in some detail and you look at the truth table for the half adder you can calculate that the output of the full adder carry, so the carry out of the full adder is going to be 1 if the carry out from the first half adder is 1 or the carry out from the second half adder is 1. So this means that we can use a simple OR gate 
to determine the combination of the two carry out stages from the half adder to determine the correct carry out stage for our full adder. So now I'm going to build a circuit to implement this full adder using our logic gates. I've modified the previous circuit to add a third input. This is our carry in stage and now this allows us to create a full adder circuit. So a full adder circuit has three inputs and two outputs. The three inputs are A, B and carry in and the outputs are our sum and carry. So you see here that this is required that we build two half adders. So I've used two exclusive OR gates and two AND gates to create two half adders and I've joined them together by driving the sum of the first half adder into the input of the second half adder and the two carries are joined together using an OR gate and this provides us with our carry. So you see now that we have three inputs so we have two to the power of three possible combinations that's eight possible combinations so the very first combination is if we have an input A of one in this case one plus zero plus zero gives us an output sum of one and a carry of zero. If we have two A is equal to B is equal to one we have one plus one plus zero which gives us a carry of one and a sum of zero. If we press the three inputs at the same time and this is the big difference between the half adder and the full adder is that we now have three inputs so one plus one plus one is a sum of one and a carry of one. The other combinations arise too for example if the only thing that applied to our circuit to our full adder was a carry of one we should get a sum of one and a carry of zero and then if we had for example a is equal to one and a carry is carried in well then we have a total new carry of one and a sum of zero. Similarly for the other uh, B input and the carry in we've got 0 1 1 which gives us a sum of 0 and a carry of 1. So that works for all 8 possible combinations of this circuit with one of the combinations being 0 0 0 which gives a sum of 0 and a carry of 0. So hopefully by viewing this video you've learned how to build a half adder and a full adder using simple logic gates. In the next video, which you can follow at this link here, I'm going to build a 4-bit full adder. Now we could use our half adder and full adder circuits, but the wiring will be complex. So I'm going to use a 74HC283. So you can follow this link now to learn how to build that circuit.